Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? You know, I'm good. I'm happy to be here. I think we are both happy to be here this morning because I think both of us had a concern in our mind that the high winds would do something to our internet or our power. Yes. And we wouldn't be able to do this this morning. Yeah, I, it was a little afraid that um, we'd wake up and like there would be trees down and I just, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was loud. It was loud last night. There were some oh, roaring, yeah. roaring winds. It definitely woke me up and I'm a pretty like light sleeper anyway, or at least like an easily disrupted sleeper, we'll say. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I, so I knew, but it's like going in when you know this is going to happen, I was like, well, I'm going to keep a book next to my bed in case I wake up and I just can't go back to sleep. But instead I did that thing where I just like, you just keep your eyes closed. You just keep laying there and you don't really know if you're awake or asleep or how long it lasts. But that was kind of my, <laughs> my night. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, Tara. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Carrie. Oh, didn't end up in Oz, Carrie says. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad of that. Hi, Liz. <laughs> well, I wonder what Liz's weather is like. She's in Colorado, so uh, she's, you know, had some epic snowfall in recent weeks. Um, oh. She sent a picture. She can, she can, she can speak for herself, but she sent a picture. It was like 13 inches or something a couple weeks ago when they got all those snows and I'm looking outside at my flowers and I'm like, oh. <laughs> she says, oh, yes, it was a good week for her, for um, tornado sirens to be tested. <laughs> yeah, that was that was nice on Wednesday. We know we're good. <laughs> Morning, Melanie. Yeah. And we always have that conversation of like, I hope that doesn't happen at work because I mean, it's of course, it's, it's not great to have it happen anytime. But um, right. but at our location, the best shots really the bathrooms. And so we never really want to all have to be crammed in the restroom together. Especially right now when you're supposed to be social distancing. <laughs> right. Staff, people, patrons, none of us, not, nobody wants that. No one wants to be all in the restroom together. So no. um, knock on wood for that. <laughs> oh, I hate, I hate, I hate those, those, those drills. Luckily for us, it's, you know, the basement, like the one corner, there's, Kind of enough room to spread people out, so it's not too yeah. bad. Yeah. Liz says currently it's just cold snow. Snow was last exactly. week. We got a snow day. Ooh. Man, it's fun to get a snow day as a grown up. And yeah. actually, I think that's especially extra exciting, Liz, because I think Liz works from home. So to get a snow day working from home is like extra special. <laughs> like they really care about you. Right? Yeah. Like that yeah. is. I've never heard of that. And John's lost a piece of siding. Oh no! Mm -hmm. so, Our Amanda branch yes. lost some siding in the. Well, I, it was really loud. I feel like anything untethered. I was lying there in bed thinking, like, well, what's in my backyard that isn't tied down? You know, I, maybe I should have gone through. I've got a couple like buckets and old um, mm -hmm. planters. You know, nothing special or important, but I do have some things sitting around, and I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't know where those are going to be. I wonder if my furniture is still on my porch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that before I go to work today. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's not across the street, down the street, on the neighbor's porch. Who knows how these things come? Who knows? <laughs> so you mentioned you kept a book beside the bed. Anything? Are you reading anything? Oh, um, this is what I'm about to start. I just kind of read the introduction or whatever. It's called um, called Sea Land. Mm -hmm. The subtitle is The True Story of the World's Most Stubborn Micronation and Its Eccentric Royal Family. And again, have not read much of it, but the idea is that in 1967, um, this man seized basically a disused World War II anti-aircraft gun platform in, off the coast of England, some, I think off the coast of England somewhere. And um, it was in international waters, this anti-aircraft thing and it's like a, sort of a mini island of some kind that was mainly used for that and so he kind of like seized it for his family and just they declared themselves this micro nation and actually according to the back the independent nation still stands today replete with its own constitution national flag and anthem currency and passports and they've had like this half cent century of fighting people off i think there's a connection to like pirate radio here um oh, and cool. so i just thought it just seemed it was on a list I was looking at, and um, but I did learn that micronation is distinct from microstate. A microstate is recognized worldwide with membership and organization. Yeah. But a micronation is basically just an invented country um, whose boundaries go unrecognized, but somehow 
it just it still can exist as a micronation and this is a little bit different because it was in international water so it wasn't like me saying this is my micronation my house this is it like no one really had claim to this so anyway it's called sea land the author is dylan taylor layman you can say i got it through search ohio so if that's ever a service anyone uh has questions about feel free to call in but if our library doesn't have things um you're not getting any search results for it you can search a broader network of libraries uh, academic libraries included and get stuff so that's where this came from so anyway <laughs> you know, i'll let you know what i learned about sea land that sounds really interesting mm -hmm. i often i often joke about you know, running off and buying an island. Like you watch those, those I bought an island shows on that. Okay. Like, I can't afford to buy breakfast, but no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, yeah, I would love to have an island and not have to right. do anything and just it live sounds like, a life of luxury. Yeah, it sounds like you're kind of just looking for the, the solitude and the body of water between you and other people. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I very much need that. Um, although I would probably also need like a vat of sunscreen because, you know, I burn very easily. Yeah. I was, th there are islands everywhere in every climate, but I always picture them as like tropical. So, yeah. And you know, when you mention an island in every climate, and instantly I thought of, I'm like, yeah, you're right. I'm sure there's Antarctic islands, but then I'm just picturing that glaring sun off of ice and like, again, no cover. Oh, yeah. Like even worse than a tropical island. So yeah, I think you islands sunburn without the sun, without the warmth. <laughs> the, the worst of both worlds, really. Um, <laughs> actually, when you were talking about the sunscreen, I noticed, I, I don't know why I'm talking about this on here. No one will be able to tell on here anyway because of how the lighting setup is. But I noticed that my face is like a little bit darker. I've got a little bit more freckles. Like you can tell it's gotten warm enough that like my outdoor walks have increased and my time spent standing over my flower beds, just looking in them, waiting for something to happen, has increased. <laughs> I've got the staring at the daffodils, forehead burn or whatever. And um, snow burn is a real thing and snow blindness, yes. I, oh, I wear my sunglasses more in the winter, I think, than I do. <laughs> Well, I know we talked that one day when we had our snow day. I think we yeah. talked about how you went to like let the dog out or whatever, and you come back inside and you're like, "Oh, my eyes!" It was like this, like everything was like this bright green. It was just right. <laughs> like I got a snow day and that was great, but I went blind on it and that was not great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know because I was sitting here at my tape my table and like just looking out the window was I had to because yeah. I told you that you're like, "Well, put on your sunglasses." I'm like, "I'm indoors." <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't want to eat my breakfast with my sunglasses on at my table. You're that cool, Allison. You're yes. just that cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you reading then? That's what I've got going um, on starting. I just got Clara in the Sun. Mm. So I'm I haven't yes. started that yet. I, I checked it out yesterday. And so I haven't started that yet. And um, the X talk came in for me. Oh, that yeah. video show yeah. one where they're they're like rivals, but they've got to do a relationship show on the on the radio. And of course, they're gonna fall in love because look at that bright pink cover. What else right. do you expect? Right. <laughs> and it's it is a unique premise in that they have to pretend to be exes. There's many a book. Yes and movie where they have to pretend to be dating. But I actually, I'm sure others exist, but I don't remember one where they have to pretend to be exes. Yeah, I've, I've not seen that 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 take on it before either. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to starting those and maybe if it's a, a quiet weekend, I'll get some reading in. Yeah, I actually have a copy of Clara and the Sun here too. I think mine was like a week ago that I checked it out and I'm already having doubts about my ability to read it in that time. But, uh, so if you get to it for if you get to when you get to it, you'll have to report back because I think I'll have to return mine. You're not going to read it. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to. I just I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. I sometimes I become overwhelmed with reading obligations, and that is where I am right now. And uh, I still like having them all at home to look at them until it's time to return. Yes. Speaking of my bad library habits, I think we were going to mention 
the lockers, our hold pickup lockers. Yes. To do. And that relates to my bad library habits because the lockers are awesome, but the stuff doesn't remain in them indefinitely, which somehow was kind of what I thought. I sort of thought that the books that I checked out would just sit in the lockers like for weeks on end, which isn't how it works on the hold shelf. So why would it work that way in the lockers? We only had 40 lockers, Allison. You I know. I can't have, I can't have the can't monopolize the lockers. If you saw how many books are always around me, you'd see why I wanted more shelf space at the lockers. Um, but just like a regular hold, it holds for five days in the locker for you. But I, anyway, if you want to talk about if you want to talk about how they work, and I'll talk about how they don't work. Um, yeah, it's it's super easy when you place a hold. Um, you can select from the locations. There's like main library. Greenman Library, Northwest Library, where Allison is, but there's also um, the holds lockers at Maine is one of the options. I forget exactly the wording. Um, I think it's best to do But holds lockers is one of the options, and we'll put the, the books in the locker for you. Um, you'll get an email when, when your holds are ready, and it will tell you after this time during the day, they'll be in the locker, and um, you can pick them up whenever is convenient for you over the next five days. And then when you come to the lockers, you can just scan your library card or you type in the last five digits of your card number and the locker where your books are just pops open. It, it's fun. It's just like, boom, you're like, it's cool. <laughs> um, and your books are ready to go. Yes. So and the only, really the only difference is those books are going to be checked out to you when they put mm -hmm. them in the whole locker. So you get five extra days with them to account for really? the five days that they're being held. Um, so you're not losing time with your books. Um, but I think because they were checked out to me, I think that's why somehow I thought they were mine for a really long time. <laughs> but no, they're checked out to you for five days and then they're going to be pulled the same way they would be pulled off our whole shelf because we need the space for other people to use the lockers. Yeah. And Judith reassured me it is the last five digits of your card number that you need. Yeah. Uh, and Carrie thinks it's magical. <laughs> it is magical. And we have hold lockers at our Baltimore location as well and at our kiosk. So that's support. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why um, Judith knows for sure because she's been using them for longer than we have. Much uh, longer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but we're excited to have them. They're super convenient and it's just nice to. It's nice to not have to go in somewhere. It's nice. It's nice to just not have to interact with people um, and to just go pick them out from the locker. Uh, and then you could also do it on Sunday because they're twenty four seven. So, yep. Or if you, you know, you work late and you can't get into town before the library closes since we're closing earlier now, it's mm -hmm. it's very convenient. Yeah, um, it is nice. Can I tell you about something the library is doing that's super convenient that I think is really cool? Yes. We have um, at-home COVID tests that you can pick up at the library. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just, you don't have to schedule an appointment or any time. You just come to the library anytime it's open, pull up out front, give us a call, and we'll deliver them curbside to your car. Um, you take them home and you do them, um, there's like an app you can put on your phone. So like say you traveled somewhere and you need to show your employer I'm COVID free. There's an app that you can put on your phone that will say this person's COVID free. Um, but you you do it on your computer with the camera and um, a person walks you through taking the test. It's really simple. Um, I did it last weekend um, because <laughs> my sister came to visit. Mm -hmm. um, so we all sat around taking COVID tests to make sure we could take off our masks and oh, um, and go around each other. But it's just a nasal swab. There's some some, some so testing solution you put in the just a little thing about, mm -hmm. about that big, a little card about that big. You put the testing solution in. You do the nasal swab, both nostrils. You put the swab in the testing solution, um, and then you fold the card over. And it's got a strip at the top where it shows you your test results. And yep, that's awesome. It's, I'm glad that it's mostly easy. She watches you do it mm -hmm. to verify like it's all done properly. And um, we got these through the Ohio Department of Health, so it's a program they're running. They're having libraries help them distribute these tests to get them out in the community because you know testing is key right now. So yeah. Yeah, and so you don't need to have a library card. You don't need to show us your library card. You don't need to show us anything. 
um, when you go to sign up, at, I don't know if things will change over time, but it may say like, I think when you get the app, it's going to say like, here are places to get a test, go get a test, show them that you're on this app. You actually don't need to show us that information. Um, when they tested all of this through health departments, there was more data collection then. But um, so if you know you're going to need to test and you want to come pick them up, you don't even have to have downloaded the app yet. You can just come get yeah. a test. Yeah. And yeah. you just, like I said, you, there's no, nothing you need to do ahead of time. You can just pull up to the library anytime, give us a call and we'll deliver them to your car curbside. It's easy peasy. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's really great. There's a lot of circumstances, I think, where these tests will come in handy. The idea is to use them when you need to present a negative test to somebody or to double check, double check something in a circumstance that came up uh, with a friend of mine recently was kind of using it when you may have been exposed, but you're not sure, you've gone and scheduled a test, but those take a little while to come back. And you know you have this window of time where you could become positive. It's mm -hmm. great to have at home to test and say, I am still negative. Yes. I remain negative until that window has passed. So you can feel, you can feel comfortable because it takes a while to get in to get a test. Sometimes it takes a while to get your test results back. And if you're doing that, like with this big gap in days every time, you're like, can I go get groceries or not? You know, when you when you don't feel like you have no symptoms, you have nothing. Yeah. But you feel irresponsible, you know. So anyway, yeah. it's great to be able to monitor. Yes. And, you know, like I felt like I had been very careful and I was, you know, hadn't been exposed in any way. But I still wanted to make sure I didn't get my sister sick when she came to visit. So it was good on both sides. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. So I'm really happy that we have those. Um, I think there'll be more and more instances to use them, yes. you know, as time goes on when when our testing becomes more more likely that you don't have it and you need to prove that you don't. For so long we were in the realm of so many people did have it and we needed to find those people and now it's kind of more like, you know, showing I don't have it, which is great. And then, you know, and until everyone's vaccinated, it's it's kind of also a, a nice stopgap, you know, to fill in that, you know, I feel yeah. safe, but not quite safe enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we've got some pretty good stuff going on. Yeah. The library then, yeah. Between the lockers and the tests are really exciting. Yeah, I, I'm very glad we're, we're able to offer those to people. And uh, less exciting, just, you know, societal things. I am now one of the people who've been um, a target of unemployment fraud. Oh. I, I, just as another little PSA to everybody on here, if that's what we're doing right now. Um, I I know the governor spoke about it like a couple months ago at this point, probably. He, what he was, he and um, other people in, yeah. yeah, were targeted or not targeted, but were victims of basically unemployment fraud. Someone files an unemployment claim in your name. And sometimes you get a letter in the mail that's like, you know, here's your pin or whatever. And you're like, pin for what? Um, in my case, the library received information that was like asking them to verify my unemployment claim, which of course they did not. Um, and so and other library employees have had this happen to them. It's happened to a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Um, there is a very easy to access website um, where you can report unemployment fraud. And uh, that's what I did this morning. So just a public service announcement, please be extra careful if you, and, and what the information I got also said, it's especially bad if you get some type of a tax form that wants yeah. you to report your unemployment earnings. That's, things have gotten to a point and you definitely wanna make sure you've got that figured out because it will reflect like your tax filings. I didn't get that form at least yet, but it's still a whole thing. So, yeah, that's it's a shame that that kind of stuff happens. And it's so scary when it does. <laughs> You're like, this isn't me. I didn't do this. So anyway, just not to be a Debbie Downer, but just while we're talking about things. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, what can we talk about next? That's not that. I went to a play last night. A play? I'm surprised that you were out and about. I I I I am too because I don't like crowds. I have never liked crowds, and um, but my nephews I love, so yeah. I, I I will go do do that kind of stuff for them. 
Um, they had it set up so, you know, people wore their masks and you sat in like family pods. They have very limited on ticket sales, which isn't great for like the theater group at the school. No. Ticket sales are where they make their money. Right. Yeah. You have the rights for, to do those shows, you know. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, you sat in your little family pod and they had every other row blocked off in addition to that. So, yeah. you were spaced out during the performance. Yeah. That was good. Um, I maybe had a hard time leaving because. Well, that's because you know, everyone's up at the same time and mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, well, how was the show, though? It was very good. They did Cinderella. And oh, uh, oddly, I knew about half the songs. And I'm trying to remember how I know them. Like, I, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't feel like I've ever seen Cinderella before. No. Um, but I knew about half of the songs. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know how that happened. Well, I would imagine you enjoyed it more for knowing them. I did. I did. But it was like, how do I know this song? I've never seen this musical before. They must yeah. have been like on like a Best Hits of Broadway CD or yeah. something yeah. like that. Because I did. I knew, I knew half of the songs. Interesting. Well, our I know Lancaster High School did Cinderella at one point while I was there. I was not in it, though. That was not. No one wants me. No one wants me in that. No in one that. wants me in that. Which is fine. Um, Andrea wants to know if you watched the one with Brandy and Whitney. No. Uh -uh. Mm, okay. So I, I, I really don't know how. Maybe like the choir sang a. I, I yeah, don't maybe, know. Yeah, like maybe you actually performed a medley at some point. Yeah, but it's very odd to, to go to a musical and know half of the songs. Yeah. Like you know all of them because you've been listening to the soundtrack for years. Or right. You know oh, I was in Cinderella at LHS. I'm sorry. To, I'm, for calling you out here, but well, she did. She made the comment. You were in it. How exciting! It was a good show. Nice. She was in the chorus, so she does know all the songs. <laughs> my nephew was in the chorus as well, oh. and my other nephew was doing sound for the show. Oh. So, well, that's great. I'm glad you were able to go. I'm glad you were able to, uh, you know, support them and get out. And it was a very late night getting home, though. So, very glad for coffee. Like, when was the last time, I'm asking this publicly, but when was the last time I was ever out late, truly? Because it would have been before the pandemic because I didn't, would, would never do anything. And so I'm guessing, I don't was know. Was it the night after the, yes. the Garrett Players performance where we yes. met up at It the was. Restaurant? Speaking of, of plays and performances, the Garrett Players used to perform so frequently on the third floor of the library and it was so fun to go. Library staff were always at those performances. We really liked them. We haven't had one since the pandemic and the final one before the pandemic was in February. And Leah and I and some other people from work, we went to the show and then we went to Roosters and we hung out and we made all these plans for things we were gonna do in the coming year. We were gonna go to Ikea together. We we're gonna do all yes. these things. We're and gonna then, go um, pancake balls. That's right. Yes. Right. And so instead, then like three weeks later, the library was closed. So um, <laughs> I think I might need this comment explained. Um, oh, this well, says you're never out that late. You're in bed by 8 p.m. working on your night cheese. That's a line from 30 Rock. Uh, okay. Liz, Liz Lemon from 30 Rock is wrapped up on her couch and she's singing a song about how she's working on her night cheese as she's eating like a block of cheese on her couch, which is, yes, about how, you know what, but I'm happy that way. So, speaking of cheese, speaking of cheese, speaking yeah. of cheese. Um, so driving home last night, it's like a two hour drive. So I didn't get home till midnight. And like, you know, you got to like keep yourself awake, stopped at, and there's nothing open late this time because of the pandemic. So I stopped at a gas station and I got um, some drinks and some snacks. I got a bag of chips, Snyder of Berlin, smoked Gouda potato chips. Oh my God, they were delicious. I love them. Gouda potato chips. All right. I love potato chips. I love yeah. cheese. Smoked Gouda potato chips. Fabulous. That sounds like the type of thing that is best found at a gas station too. Like you, like right. you may not be able to find it at Kroger or Giant Eagle, but uh, 
gas station. Mm-hmm. Smoked Gouda. They were fat. Well, and actually, I, speaking of like gas station and like a drive through thing, someone on my Facebook um, posted about Dandy brand cheese curls. I don't know if you've, they're like Dandy. Like cheese Dandy. And that was, we always used to eat those at my grandma's. My brother and I, we would just power through bags of those Dandy cheese curls at my grandma's house because she lived in Northern Ohio and we didn't have them here. And someone on my Facebook posted a picture that she'd gotten somewhere recently, but it was, again, it was a, it was a drive through or a gas station situation. It was not because I don't ever see them where I'm normally grocery shopping. I'm like, where did you get those dandies? <laughs> right. Yeah. And Andrea agrees with me that yes, these chips are amazing. So it's not just me. I'm not the only one. And Carrie says that I really did like them. They made the show. They really did. They made the whole trip. I was just like, Oh, oh my God. God, these chips are fabulous. Yum. <laughs> Well, I'll have to keep my eye out for them. And maybe I should just start going to more like drive through situations and see if I can find some right. fun snack foods. Yeah. I'm actually speaking of getting fun snack foods. I'm looking forward. I don't have any of my vaccines yet. I don't have any shot or anything like that. I'm hoping to, you know, get on the schedule soon. Um, but my plan for when I do is I'm going to eat that stat- store of like pandemic food I bought because that's not to say I can't still get sick. And it's not to say that I still w- might not be able to go to the grocery store for a certain number of days, but just things will feel different. Not to mention there's click list and it's not everything happening to everyone at the same time. It would be just happening to me. You know, it wouldn't be like a huge ordeal where click list is blocked up for seven days. Like it was at the beginning of the pandemic and stuff. So anyway, I've thought I've decided that my celebratory thing will be to uh, eat all my pandemic food. Oh, I think I have lost Leah. I don't know if Leah's frozen or I'm frozen. That's, we just never know. I'm guessing Leah's frozen because my internet connection looks good. So we're going to see if she comes back or doesn't. Normally she shows back up again, which makes me think maybe I'm frozen. I have no idea. I also watch for... Hmm. For someone to text me that uh, I'm frozen. Well, this has been a great show. Okay, Leah's frozen, so I'm still here. Great, guys. She has um, disappeared, and sometimes she's able to pop back on. So I might wait for her to pop back on. You're just here with me now, though. I'm so sorry. I don't have any entertaining stories for you. It's hard to do the show solo, I'll tell you that. Well, I'm hoping that she shows up here shortly. If anyone has an interesting story to tell in the comments, please feel free. (sighs) Oh, no. Melanie says that Leah has a good expression on her face while she's frozen. And I don't know if that means actually good or uh, hilarious good. I hope for Leah's sake it's actually good. Well, I don't see her. We're at 28 minutes, so I feel like I'm going to go ahead and call it. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. Importantly, um, oh, Liz wants me to talk about my pig picture. That was a Christmas gift, and I love it. I have nothing more to say about it really other than that, but it makes me happy. Um, Next week, we are going to be on a hiatus. We won't be here next week on Friday, Um, but... The following week we will be back and the following week we're going to talk about mysteries so if you guys have any suggestions um of mysteries that you a have read and liked b you're interested in reading or just any requests to any information about mysteries definitely uh leave them as comments here or be prepared for our show in two weeks and that's what we're going to talk about all types of mysteries i know we hit on cozies last week but we're gonna broaden it out and talk about all kinds of mysteries in two weeks. So we will see you then.